Hey guys, welcome to, check it out, Montana. But as a Colorado boy, I gotta represent. And Jeep flew me out here today to test drive and review this. It is the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer L. That's right, the L stands for long, and this is an eight person family hauler. It's three rows, seats two, three, and three, which adds up to eight. So in this video, we're gonna go over this big boy. We're gonna talk about what's under the hood. We're gonna go inside, show you what is so luxurious about this. We're gonna talk about pricing. We're gonna talk about towing. And let's get started as we always do, and that is under the hood. Now, if you're a Grand Wagoneer fan, you'll note that this started out life back in 1963. Yep, the Grand Wagoneer was one of the first luxury SUVs. Now, your Range Rover fans may disagree with that, but here in America in 1963, I believe the Woolies Corporation, which turned into the AMC Corporation, which turned into Chrysler, eventually uh, came out with this as a really cool, luxurious family hauler. And basically, it stayed that way from 1963 until 1993. But now, Jeep has brought back the Grand Wagoneer. And of course, being a Jeep, you'll note the seven slotted grille to let you know this is a proper Jeep product. Uh, and I just did a video that'll be over at TFL Car where I compare the original Grand Wagoneer to this new one. And I gotta tell you, this thing is so much bigger. It is huge. But what really makes it noteworthy is that it doesn't have a Hemi under the hood. Nope, 5.7 liter Hemi, 6.3 liter, it's all gone. It's this. Jeep calls this the new Hurricane Twin Turbo 3 liter V6. And this is the 510, which means it's the bigger of the two Hurricane engines. And it puts out 510 horsepower and get this, 500 pound foot of torque made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. And actually I got my little cheat sheet and Jeep says that in this form it gets, get this, 14 in the city, 19 on the highway which for a very big vehicle is actually not bad. Now I do like this badge right here, uh, designed in Auburn Hills, Michigan, built in Warren, Michigan, uh, which is true, uh, except for the fact that this engine is built in Mexico. But the rest of the Jeep is built in Michigan. Now, of course, this big boy family hauler competes in the luxury SUV segment. So think about competitors like the Escalade, uh, the Navigator, any of the big American truck-based SUVs. Uh, and because it's an American big boy vehicle, it's got a lot of room on the inside. So let me show you what, of course, is new. Um, not just the American flag with, of course, the stars leading the way. Those should always be pointing forward in the direction of movement. Of course, you've got your deployable side step so it's easy to get in and out but they have completely redesigned the interior so once upon a time the seat controls were right here uh, but now uh, jeep has moved them up to a place that's familiar for all you mercedes owners right up there uh, and i think these are 23 way adjustable seats which is pretty crazy uh, and before we go and show you all the luxurious features all the screens let me uh, show you the back because let's face it if you're buying one of these chances are you're going to be hauling a lot of people so like i said this is an eight seater uh, so there is room for eight people uh, and uh, it is quite enormous so i've got the seat pushed forward and i am sitting comfortably in the second row uh, and i do have my own vents right there, as you can tell, uh, as well as a USB and USC port for both passengers, or if there's three, uh, and then uh, electricity as well for uh, being able to power whatever device you have. And then you could get optional screens in here for the kiddos. But Jeep says, and this is when I test this out, that actually somebody that's my size, which is uh, 6'2", uh, can sit in the back quite comfortably. Oh, I love this. Look at this. Now that is uh, definitely luxury to have these screens. That always is a mark of coolness for me. All right, so let's see if somebody my size can fit back here comfortably. I do have uh, 
Cup holders back here, look at this. I have my own sunroof and there's a massive one in the front as well. Uh, quite big windows. One of the things uh, the Jeep was going for when they designed this was a feeling of airiness, a feeling of openness. And I gotta say, uh, look at this, I've got enough headroom. Uh, and I've got, uh, this is really luxurious. Check this out, reclining seats, third row reclining seats. There are not many vehicles where you can recline the seat in the back. And of course, USB-C and USB uh, ports for power uh, and uh, individual lighting. Uh, and then of course, we'll check out the back to see how much room is in the back with the third row up. Now let's put this back. I wonder if I can do it electronically. I'll probably have to do it manually. And uh, yeah, plenty of leg room. You know, th there is more room in the back, in the third row of this vehicle, than in many smaller two-row SUVs. That's how much room is in here. I gotta say, if you're looking for a vehicle that will fit you and your entire family, uh, this might be one that should be on your shopping list because it is enormous. Now, some of the things that people don't like about this is kind of the side profile. You know, I've heard unkind words about the side. It looks a little bit like an airport van. Uh, and that is because usually uh, the B pillar and the C pillar on most of these big SUVs are blacked out. They're not body colored. And by making it body colored, it does give it a little bit of an airport van appearance, but it is a design feature the Jeep has gone with, along with the hexagonal, hexagonal? Uh, wheel arches, which are very Jeep-like. Uh, so, love it or not, um, that's what it looks like on the side. It does make a bold statement. I mean, look at the, look at the size of this uh, rear view mirror. I mean, look at the size of this rear window. It is enormous. Look at the size of that rear door. I mean, it is enormous. I mean, they stretch this thing by not inches, but by feet. So let's see how much room is in the back. Actually, let's do it the easy way, which is uh, like that. So keep in mind, we've got all of our camera back, all of our camera gear back here with the third row up. Imagine if we actually put the third row down and the second row down. This would be bigger than a king size bed back here. And of course, being a luxury vehicle, it is all electronic. Once again, you get uh, more power back here uh, uh, and um, you get uh, nice little tie downs that are very usable here and of course right there as well. So if you do need to put something here that's gonna move around, plenty of room for that. Uh, well, let's lower these seats. Let's just see how that works. So second row and third row are electric. So let's try that. I might hit on the headrest. Oh, look at that. They even engineered the headrest to come down that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And as you can see, um, I guess that seat's too far back, so it's not letting it down, but there are actually cup holders back there as well for the, sec for the third row. So uh, all the luxuries of the second row in the third row. Uh, usually the button is over here on the side because Jeep does it differently. Now, if, in case you're wondering about towing, uh, max towing, if you get the max tow package is 10 thousand pounds which is getting into you know full-size pickup range and with the max tow package which is a thousand dollar option you also get an integrated brake controller because if you're going to be towing ten thousand uh, pounds you better be uh, controlling that load uh, with a brake controller all right uh, Ian why don't you go around the passenger side I'll get on the driver's side and we'll kind of talk about some of the features so First and foremost, of course, I got started up, is this massive sunroof, which allows a lot of sun to come in here. And of course, also, look at that. A sunroof, actually a moonroof. And you can open this all the way, so you can really make this nice and bright and airy. And I do like that. Oh, let me close this. Uh, then we have not one, not two, but three uh, different screens. Uh, over here in front of you uh, basically gives you all your driving information. Uh, 
Then on the second screen, you've got navigation and uh, real HVAC uh, buttons. So you can do it both virtually or you could do it for real. Heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, and thank God, a volume and a regular old tuning knob. Uh, and then over here, since this is a luxury vehicle, you have your massaging seats. How could you not have massaging seats? Now, one of the black magic things that I really love about this vehicle is I love this wood. This is all real wood. And I like how it's segmented so you can pull it back and it kind of disappears and rolls. How cool is that? You've got uh, USB and USB-C uh, ports right there. Uh, uh, and then if you want to charge your telephone, um, look at that magic behind the screen. There is a charger, more charging for your mobile devices, and of course, if you're in Texas, you can put your Bible or your gun down there. So, uh, a little flap that turns into a screen. Once again, some pretty cool magic. Here you have your cup holders, and then a, cup, a phone holder there. Let me put this back. Uh, fo vertical phone holder right here, right there, or you can charge back there. Uh, now this, of course, being a Jeep, you also have your different uh, drive modes, which you can select with these levers. So you have sport, auto, snow, uh, sand, and rock. Uh, and since you do have air suspension um, in rock mode, you get up to uh, 10 inches of ground clearance. Now, I'm not sure that anybody's gonna be uh, taking this Jeep uh, off-road, but we will be doing that as part of a video that we'll be putting up on TFL Off-Road. If you wanna see that video, just head on over to uh, alltfl.com. But it does have, check this out right there, a four-wheel drive low, so a traditional transfer case. Uh, so it is a proper Jeep uh, with a transfer case. Um, and no lockers, but there is a limited slip on the rear. So it actually should be surprisingly good off-road. Now, if you're wondering uh, what's underneath here, it's a massive cubby hole uh, that also uh, can be uh, fitted with a refrigerator. So if you want to have a ultimate overlanding Jeep, this might be a good one for that because it is so roomy and you can put a fridge in here. Um, now, pricing, of course, let's talk about that. It's not cheap. It starts at about for the, uh, this is a Series 2, uh, they started about, for the long version, 91000 and Jeep does this thing that, once again, I'm not in love with. They do a $2,000 uh, destination fee, which, you know, you can't argue about. Unfortunately, it's part, I think it should be part of the sticker, so you're really starting at ninety three, uh, and you can go all the way up to about $114,000, $15,000 if you get the Series 3, the most luxurious one. This is a Series 2, uh, and I've got the sticker right here. So we're looking at, once again, destination $2,000 and an MSRP of $104,85. Um, you know, it's a lot of money. Uh, Jeep has also added four gallons uh, to the gas tank uh, of this long version. Uh, and they say that you can get over 700 miles of range uh, when you're driving this, which is quite amazing for all of you uh, people that hate uh, filling up the gas. Uh, this is a good thing to have bigger gas tank. Now, one of the cool things here, of course, is the original Jeep had fake wood. We've got real wood. Uh, and there's some really interesting craftsmanship. So, for instance, this is real metal that has been inlaid into uh, this wooden uh shelf and you've got this very obvious grand wagoneer that's embedded into the vehicle so you'll never forget what you're driving i do like this big steering wheel the original grand wagoneer had two spoke design so they copy the two spokes uh, so you can you know have a lot of places to hold on to uh, all in all it feels very modern it feels very sleek it feels very elegant uh, you do have your regular rear view mirror or if you want can also go with the camera review mirror. I have found this to be especially useful when like the rear gets either muddy or dirty with snow or sleet. These cameras usually uh, have a great unobstructed view of what's behind. Uh, all kinds of controls of course here in the steering wheel including driver's assistance uh, and then of course uh, the big Grand Wagoneer, in case you forgot that it was over there also in the middle of the steering wheel. Uh, and all in all, I mean, it, it feels like Jeep has really gone up market. Now, you might be questioning, is Jeep an upmarket brand? Uh, and the fact is, with cars like this, it is definitely becoming an upmarket brand because obviously now you're competing in the rarefied world of Navigator, of Escalade, 
um, some of the larger SUVs that Mercedes makes, uh, and um, maybe even starting to reach uh, Range Rover levels of uh, of fit and finish and of exclusivity. The one thing that makes this different, I think, from all the others is uh, that it does certainly have that Jeep DNA with all the off-roading ability. Now, I have not yet taken it off-road. We wanted to get this video out there as soon as possible, so let's come outside and wrap this up. Um, but we will take it off-road, so we'll see if it is uh, as good off-road uh, as, let's say, uh, a Grand Cherokee. And this is the one place that I'm actually a little bit confused because you have a Wagoneer, you have a Grand Wagoneer, you have a Cherokee, you have a Grand Cherokee, you have a Grand Cherokee L, and now you have a Grand Wagoneer rear L. And where all those vehicles fit into the spectrum of Jeep, I'm not quite sure. I mean, at what point do you go from a Jeep Grand Cherokee L to a Grand Wagoneer? I do know, though, that this Grand Wagoneer L uh, is the biggest, baddest of them all, uh, and it certainly feels about as American as uh, apple pie and Jeep, uh, because uh, if you want to be the guy in your neighborhood who can tow 10,000 pounds, who can take you and seven of your family members across the country to beautiful places like Montana and do it in all kinds of weather uh, and do it towing 10,000 pounds of, uh, well, there's an Airstream right there, then uh, this is a vehicle that will do it. And we're going to have complete off-road and towing reviews as well with this. We're still filming those, so be sure to come back to alltfl.com. Thank you guys for joining me for this quick walk around, uh, and uh, I will see you later. I've got a lot more reviews to film. Gosh, this looks a lot like Colorado, but I still like Colorado. Ciao.